this is Trish Damkroger, Vice President General Manager of High Performance Computing at Intel. Exascale Day celebrates researchers and scientists who take the challenge of discovery on the frontier of technical computing. We use this day to celebrate them for the discoveries of today and into the future that will benefit the whole world. I've been working in this field for 15 years, and Aurora is one of the most exciting supercomputer projects I've been involved in, and is really that hallmark of the convergence of HPC, data analytics, and AI. Aurora will give researchers an unprecedented set of tools and access to applications to address scientific problems and advance scientific research and discovery. I'm thrilled to see how Exascale Computing will speed discovery in cancer treatments, open new insights into astrophysics, and drive breakthroughs to address climate change. It is exciting to see the industry come together to discuss the possibilities of Exascale and celebrate the great work that has been done by researchers and scientists. We are particularly grateful for the long running collaboration that we've had with Argonne National Labs and our current focus on Aurora. I'm here with Rick Stevens today to talk about just that. We know your team has been working hard behind the scenes to get everything in place. So your scientists are ready to start solving real world problems. Rick, can you tell us about that? Well, thanks Trish for that question. So. Um, well, we're doing lots of things to get ready for Aurora. Um, so one of the roles I have is I'm uh, part of the management team that's overseeing the six lab leadership group that runs the Exascale Computing Project. So this is the effort that DOE is funding, uh, has been funding for the last four years and will continue to fund uh, through the uh, next uh, three or four years, um, that's developing applications and software for Exascale systems. So uh, the Exascale Computing Project is funding uh, about 25 large application teams to build software and to tune it and to improve it for Exascale platforms. And it ranges across energy, wind power, climate, uh, material science, cosmology, cancer research, metagenomics, I mean, many, many areas. And so that uh, body of software um, will be uh, on the machines on day one uh, and available to you know all the early user community. So that's part of it on application software. We're also developing system software. So um, all the libraries and tools needed to fill out the software stack to support both applications uh, that, that ECP is developing, but also applications outside of ECP. So it's over 80 software uh, teams uh, working together on the system software components and uh, that's also coming from ECP. Then the centers, individual centers, like our center, the ALCF, uh, is supporting what we call early science projects um, in both simulation, data, and uh, machine learning. And those projects are also building uh, applications that will be ready for uh, running on Aurora when it arrives. I know your team has done a great deal of pre-work to ensure your users can access Aurora as soon as possible after the system is installed. Sure. Um, so, you know, at, at Argon, of course, we've, we've got work going on in many areas uh, getting ready for, uh, for Aurora. So we have this early science program, which I mentioned previously, that's investing in applications uh, in simulation, data analysis, and machine learning. And um, uh, that, for example, the drug research that we're doing for COVID is one of those early science projects. Um, but there's there's many others, um, and 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 what's different about the early science is that uh, many of these are focused on data intensive problems. So collaborations with the advanced photon source and other uh, sources of large scale data. So uh, so that's going to really stress the data handling and machine learning components of the system. We also are gearing up for how we're going to support users. Um, there's a new facility going in. Uh, it's got a beautiful conference center. Uh, we'll be able, hopefully, post-COVID, post-COVID vaccine, everybody can travel again, and we'll be able to host people on site. Uh, but, you know, in the meantime, there'll be a ton of, of online uh, training that's ramping up for getting people ready for Aurora, uh, and uh, we'll be producing, uh, you know, modules and packages and so on uh, in conjunction with Intel to help build a community around uh, the next generation uh, hardware that Intel is producing for us. So tell me, what are your scientists and researchers most excited about? Thanks, Trish. So I think, uh, you know, what we're most excited about is the fact that this single system 
will be a world-class system for doing simulation and a world-class system for doing AI. And that allows us a lot of flexibility in the kinds of problems that we can go after, including the ability to combine these things. So there's a, a new type of, of uh, integration uh, that people are developing that builds uh, machine learning models uh, into simulation codes, uh, this concept called surrogate modeling. And uh, we're pioneering this in the context of drug development and a few other areas uh, where we can get factors of a thousand or more uh, speed up by using machine learning to augment the simulation. Um, I think uh, people are also excited about just the fact that this machine will be a very capable uh, high-end simulation platform with a large amount of memory, much larger than current systems. Um, and it will have an I.O. system that's many times faster than current systems. And so for streaming problems and for problems where we have to deal with very, very large databases, it will be a, an excellent system. Uh, you know, at, from an Argonne perspective, I mean, we're, we are focusing on problems in cancer research. We're focusing on cosmology. We're focusing on material science and on uh, all the kinds of data analysis, real-time problem-solving that happens when you couple a machine like uh, Aurora to the advanced photon source. We have really enjoyed partnering with you on this project. We look forward to continuing our collaboration in silicon development, future architecture co-design for HPC and AI, and the whole software ecosystem enablement. How do you see Intel and Argonne's collaboration evolving? So, thanks for that. So um, I think, you know, these three areas that we've scoped out, that we kind of lay out a a roadmap for the next decade or so of collaboration opportunities. And uh, let me hit them each uh, separately for a second. So the the silicon process is a, is a, as you know, is a huge challenge uh, for, the, for the industry to continue to make progress on uh, accelerating uh, you know, next generation uh, architectures by improving the silicon process nodes. And this is an area where um, uh, we're quite interested in collaborating with Intel on bringing simulation and AI to this problem of silicon process optimization. And we'll be making some announcements with you, you know, over the next few months on how we're going to do that. Uh, for next generation architectures, you know, um, the uh, exascale machines represent kind of a, a, a new starting point for future architectures. And we're quite interested in collaborating with Intel and, and working out what are the options for future systems? Um, how do we integrate and combine the kinds of functionality that now uh, in Aurora might be on separate devices? Um, how can we uh, make a more tightly coupled uh, environment? How can we advance uh, the networking and, and so on? So there's a whole set of architecture related projects that uh, we are in the process of uh, organizing with you that We'll, we'll take a look at, at those options and those trade-offs and, and to apply a co-design concept um, both to the hardware but also to the future generation applications that are going to drive that hardware, particularly applications that have this mix of, of AI components and traditional simulation and data components. So that's, you know, that's part two. And in part three, you know, around software ecosystem, um, it's, it's really important that we... Uh, expand the number of people who can write software for these advanced architectures. Intel's made some great progress with the One API uh, concept that provides a, a common programming environment uh, for whether you're running on a CPU or a GPU or an FPGA or some other uh, system. And that's a, a step in the right direction, but um, we want to work to broaden that, uh, that standard, broaden it out, uh, and make it uh, something that's ubiquitous for the community and to build a really rich uh, software environment on top of that uh, programming model so that uh, the community uh, can, can continue to expand. Rick, thank you so much for taking time today. We look forward to partnering closely with Argonne in the years to come to speed discovery and enrich the lives of every person on Earth. Our mutual focus on delivering the latest technology and capabilities will enable scientists to tackle challenges in scientific discovery and national security at levels of complexity and performance that previously were out of reach. And the effects on the lives of people and the world will be profound.